So we've learned about low pass filters and we've learned how to design active high pass filters as well. In this video, I would like to describe active bandpass filters. It turns out that constructing a bandpass filter is not very difficult because it's possible to just cascade a low pass filter and a high pass filter. With these Salon key circuits, it's possible to use a high pass Salon key circuit cascaded with a low pass Salon key circuit in order to make a bandpass filter and the two sections won't interfere with each other as long as the two sides of the bandpass filter are reasonably far apart. Let's look at an example. Let's design a filter that passes frequency components between 100 Hz and 10 kHz. Now, 100 Hz and 10 kHz are two decades apart, so that's reasonably far apart so that the two Salon key segments won't interfere with one another's behavior. In this problem, we're going to have a nominal gain of 1. Now, as this is a bandpass filter, we want it to block any frequencies lower than 100 Hz or higher than 10 kHz. Let's go ahead and graph out the desired behavior of this filter. When I design filters, I often find it's easier to graph the transfer function of the filter before I start designing the circuits. Let's plot the transfer function versus the frequency for this filter. So we're told that the bandpass filter should pass frequencies between 100 Hz and 10 kHz. And the DC gain should be 1. Now if I plot this on a log scale, then I need to use decibels, so 1 corresponds to 0 dB. Now as this is a bandpass filter, we're going to pass frequencies between 100 Hz and 10 kHz. To ensure that the DC gain is nearly 1 at 10 Hz and 10 kHz, I'm going to choose the cutoff frequencies to be 90 Hz and 11 kHz. These are the 3 dB points, so the filter is going to start rolling off at 90 Hz and 11 kHz. The reason why I chose 90 Hz and 11 kHz specifically is because I wanted to widen out the passband just a little bit. Now, how it's going to roll off per decade will depend upon the order of the filter. So we need to decide whether this should be, for example, a second order filter, a fourth order filter, and so on. We're told at 10 Hz, the attenuation should be at least 26 decibels. That means that a one-pole filter, for example, wouldn't be able to do the job. A two-pole filter, though, would roll off at 40 decibels per decade. That would work. That ensures that when we're down by one decade, that is, when we're down at 10 hertz, we'll be at negative 40 decibels. Now, on the low-pass side, we're told that we should be at least 16 decibels down. So, in theory, we could design a one-pole filter for that side, but I'm going to design a two-pole filter there, too. The reason I've made that choice is because if I use Salon key segments, they're automatically two-pole filters. If I wanted to make a one-pole filter, I could just make a passive filter and follow it up by a buffer. In either case, we just need one op amp, so we might as well make it a two-pole filter on both sides. It's worth pointing out that this left side of the filter is not the low-pass side. This is the high-pass side. Even though the frequencies are lower, this is the low-pass side. If we stop and think about it a little while, it really makes sense because on the high-pass side, we're passing the higher frequencies and we're blocking off the lower frequencies. And then on the low-pass side, we're blocking the high frequencies. So we can kind of think about this filter as being two two independent filters. And again, we can just cascade high pass and low pass active Salon key circuits as long as the distance between the high pass and low pass side in terms of frequencies is high enough. Let's go ahead and design the filter now. I'm going to cascade two Salon key segments and I've decided arbitrarily to put the low pass segment first and the high pass segment second. The cutoff frequency for the low pass segment was 11 kilohertz and the cutoff frequency for the high pass segment was 90 Hz. We've decided to use a second order filter on both sides. If we bring up our design rule, we can see that for a second order filter, we need to choose a K of 1.586. This implies that the overall gain of the filter is going to be K squared, or 2.515. Now, if we go back and look at the problem statement for just a moment, we're told that the DC gain needs to be 1. That's not what we have if the gain of this filter is 2.515. So we're going to have to do something about that, but we'll do it after we design the rest of the filter. This frequency of 10 kilohertz is in the high audio range. The frequency over here of 100 hertz is in the low audio range. 
it means that we'll need a larger capacitor for the lower frequency side. Let's choose a capacitor value of 100 nanofarads for the lower frequency cutoff and let's choose one nanofarad for the higher frequency or low pass side. By using the formula and knowing what our cutoff frequency is, we can calculate what the R is in either case. So for the low pass side, we end up with R equals 14.47 kilo ohms. We could choose, for example, a standard 14 kilo ohm resistor. For the high pass side, we get a resistor of 17.7 kilo ohms. So this resistor then has a different value than this resistor because the filters operate at different frequencies. For both segments, I can arbitrarily choose the feedback resistor to be 10 kilo ohms. Then our other feedback resistor ends up being 5.86 kilo ohms. And it ends up being 5.86 kilo ohms on the other side as well. Thus, we've calculated now all of the components in the circuit. So the filter is fully designed. It would work as desired, except that the DC gain is at the wrong level. The filter that we've just designed has a DC gain of 2.515, but the problem calls for a filter with a DC gain of 1. There's two ways that this problem can be fixed. The first way would be to add an op-amp to the circuit as follows. If I call the feedback resistor R1 and I call this resistor R2, then I know that the gain of this particular op amp is minus R1 over R2. I can choose whatever ratio of R1 and R2 that I want. I could choose something in the kilo ohm range, for example, and then I could reduce the gain of my filter by adding that third op amp to the circuit. There's another way that we can solve the problem, though, without having to use a third op amp. Because we're trying to reduce the gain rather than increase it, we can just use passive components. In other words, we can just use a resistor. I would like to add a resistor at this point in the circuit, and I'll call this resistor R sub 2. I could imagine that our input behaves like a voltage source, and I'll label that Vn. And I'm going to change the value of this resistor. So let me relabel it as R sub 1. Because there's going to be current that passes through R1 and R2 that create a voltage divider. The gain of the entire circuit is no longer just k squared. The gain of this circuit is now k squared times that voltage divider that I've just created. And I want that gain to be 1 according to the problem definition. The presence of R2 is going to alter the behavior of this filter, so we need to fix it. If I imagine that I'm the rest of the filter looking back at that resistor, what resistance am I going to see? What Thevenin equivalent resistance am I going to see? Whereas before I just saw R1, I'm now going to see R1 in parallel with R2. And to prevent the filter's behavior from being altered, I need to ensure that R1 in parallel with R2 behaves just like R. So the filter won't be able to see any difference. This is a way that we can lower the gain without changing the filter's behavior. We have two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are R1 and R2. If we solve these two equations, we can find out that R1 should be 36.4 kilo ohms and R2 is 24.0 kilo ohms. That completes the design of this particular bandpass filter. In the next video, we're going to look at situations where the passband might not be so wide and you can't merely cascade Salon key segments one after the other.